Welcome back everybody, thank you for watching. Today we finally have the 545 by 39 7 and 6, also known as the Poison Bullet. Since the inception of this YouTube channel, I have been out of the closet as an AK-74 fanboy, and this is probably my favorite rifle ever. So it's a shame that it's taken me this long to test what is widely considered to be the most effective 545 by 39 but today, that's gonna change. So the seven and six poison bullet. Funny enough, these have actually become kind of hard to get these days, which is hilarious because five, six years ago, it was literally everywhere and it was like the cheapest ammo you could find. And the reason for that is because it's what the Russian military used. So there were obviously millions and millions of rounds and surplus and then, you guessed it, the United States banned them from import and ever since then, the price has been slowly going up. I think I paid 60 cents a piece for these, so 10 times what it was just a few years ago. It's a very effective round like most 5.45s are, but this one in particular was nicknamed the poison bullet because of the wound cavities it produced in combat. And it might be slightly exaggerated, I'm not sure how much of this is actually true, but apparently it caused crazy amounts of damage, especially for a small little bullet that's very similar to a 5.56. It's a 53 grain steel core bullet, corrosive ammo by the way, so you really wanna clean your rifle after you shoot this stuff, but the effectiveness of this little sucker and what sets it apart from other 5.45s and 5.56s is the way it tumbles. When the poison bullet hits soft targets, it tumbles violently. Now, I've never shot the seven and six before, so we're gonna shoot a few rounds and just see what it feels like. It might be a bad idea to shoot steel with it because it is a steel core bullet, but if I need to, I'll just flip the target around. So, of course, using the Arsenal AK-74. First time I've ever shot corrosive ammo through it. You can see the sparks as it hits the steel target. I can just feel my gun rusting as I shoot this stuff through it. <laughs> well, it put tiny little dents in my steel target, but not as bad as I thought it would, and it smells different than any other round I've shot before, which is kind of funny. So I've tried a lot of 5.45 ammo throughout the years, trying to replicate the tumbling effect of the seven and six. And the one that I found to be the most effective is the 60 grain Wolf Mill spec. It actually looks identical to the seven and six, but it's obviously a different bullet. So we're gonna compare these two throughout the video and see how much better the poison bullet actually is. 60 grain Wolf. I actually see some sparks, maybe not as many as I did with the 7 and 6, but... And I feel like that one has a little less recoil. So like I said, the claim to fame of the poison bullet is the way it tumbles when it hits soft targets. And over the years, a lot of gun tubers have done ballistic shell tests with these. And most of the ones I've seen, they have not been able to keep that bullet in the gel block. It just tumbles so sporadically, it ends up exiting out the sides or the top. So we're gonna try it and see if we can do the impossible and actually capture a seven and six poison bullet. So on the table, we have a brand new, very clear, 10% ballistics gel block from Clear Ballistics. And this is the main one I'm looking at because most of the damage will be there. But just in case it does exit that block, I have a 17 pound gummy bear on the left, also from Clear Ballistics, and then an old crusty gel block on the right. So those are just there in case the bullet exits out one of the sides, but this is really the one I'm looking at and I wanna see what kind of wound cavity we get from the poison bullet. Let's see if we can keep it in the ballistics gel. <laughs> it moved quite a bit. Let's check it out. All right, so I just watched the slow-mo and I'm so glad I got that camera because it really shows you just how impressive that actually was. That was awesome. So you can see in our gel block here, uh, where it went in and actually for the first six to eight inches, I would say not too much damage and then it started tumbling and you can see we have a big wound cavity there and then another one here. You can actually see kind of where the bullet tumbled right in the middle of the gel block and of course it turned left and exited out right near the end of the gel block. It did not hit the teddy bear or the gummy bear. Oh, it did. 
So it went in right there towards the bottom and went all the way through. Holy crap, I'm just now seeing this. So it actually did go into the gummy bear right there. You can see uh, the wound cavity and then it exited out the bottom and looks like maybe it hit our table right there. But it didn't go through the table, so I assume it just ricocheted and bounced off somewhere, but it went through the gel block and into the gummy bear and we still were not able to stop it. And you can see there are zero bullet fragments in either one of these ballistic shell blocks, which is something I don't think I've seen before. The 60 grain wolf, if I remember correctly, had a similar wound cavity, but it definitely broke apart, whereas the poison bullet stayed intact and just tumbled through that entire ballistic shell block. Let's try another one. Poison bullet attempt number two. I'm gonna to try to put this one a little bit higher since the first one it dipped down and I also moved our gummy bear back just a few inches, so. Let's see if we can capture it. <laughs> wow. We did it! Well, the first thing I'll say is these poison bullets tumble so sporadically and so unpredictably that you have to have a little bit of luck to actually stop one of them. And I definitely didn't think we would do it in two shots, but we did capture the poison bullet. So in our first gel block, you can see the wound cavity and that is more like what I was expecting to see. The first one was very impressive, especially this part here. It doesn't look like it from the side, but if you look at it from the top, it is a very big wound cavity, but the second one is definitely more impressive. And that is up there with some of the biggest wound cavities I've ever seen from a 22 caliber bullet. Just ridiculous. And you can see almost immediately it started tumbling and then curving upward. And once again, we kind of have two separate, you know, giant wound cavities, which obviously tells you the bullet was tumbling. And of course the first one curved downward and the second one curved up. So there's really no consistency to it whatsoever. And then it exited out the gel block right there towards the top. And luckily our gummy bear was there to take it right to the chest. So you can see where it went in just under his left arm. And then it actually stopped that bullet right there about halfway through the gummy bear. And it's turned backwards. Of course it was tumbling and it looks like it didn't deform or break apart hardly at all, which is unique. Usually rifle rounds flatten out or deform a little bit, whereas that one looks like it's in perfect condition. So 100% luck of the draw that I had that gummy bear there and that's the exact direction that the bullet went, but we were actually able to capture the poison bullet. Yes. And there it is. That thing is completely undamaged and literally in perfect condition, like not a single break or bend anywhere on that bullet. Usually rifle rounds flatten out or break apart, but the seven and six apparently doesn't. That's a souvenir. So after seeing the ballistic shell test, I'm sure you can imagine why this round is so effective. It doesn't deform or break apart at all, which means it's gonna get a lot of penetration and it's just tumbling the entire time it's going through a soft target. So let's try the other one and see how it compares. All right, 60 grain wolf mil spec 545. Like I said, this is the one that's impressed me the most and what I believe to be the most similar to the actual poison bullet. So, plus it's not corrosive. Let's see how it compares. There's definitely a difference, that's for sure. Well, I just watched the slow-mo videos side by side and there is a very big difference between the two. They're not as similar as I thought they would be. So our 60 grain wolf went in kind of to the right of the seven and sixes. And over here, you can see it also had a pretty good wound cavity. I would say it's less than half the size of the poison bullet. I mean, you almost can't see it because it's hidden behind that giant one there in the front. But right off the bat, you can see some bullet fragments in our ballistics gel. And if you look at the wound cavity, uh, the seven and sixes are crystal clear with literally no bullet fragments. And that's not the case with the 60 grain wolf. It's much dirtier, 
and definitely broke that bullet apart quite a bit. Now it looks like it did tumble and it also curved a little bit right before it exited the gel block. There's another big bullet fragment right there towards the end. So it is an effective, unpredictable 545, but when you look at them side by side, they're not even in the same ballpark. So when I had nothing to compare it to, it was very impressive and I thought they would be a lot more similar, but it looks like there's just no replicating the effects of the poison bullet. It's kind of in a league of its own. Well, after seeing the ballistic shell results, we probably don't need to do anything else because that kind of tells us all we need to know, but I bought four watermelons and they'll go bad if I don't shoot them. So what I wanna do is line these up two at a time, front to back, send each of these rounds through them and see what the difference is because after going through the first melon, I feel like that would be enough to start the tumbling process, and I wanna see which one does better. We'll go ahead and start with the 60 grain wolf, and to be honest, it wouldn't surprise me if this one actually wins this test because it is a softer bullet and it breaks apart on impact, so. Let's see. <laughs> it's gonna be tough to beat. And that's kind of what I thought would happen. Watermelons are just so explosive, it's kind of hard to gather anything from them, but this is redneck science, so we do it anyway. And the seven and six poison bullet. Same thing, two watermelons back to back. The 60 grainer might have exploded it just a little bit more. It looks like there's some bigger pieces left from the seven and six, but I would say it's too close to call. So after watching the slow-mo footage back, it actually looks like the seven and six did less damage to the front watermelon, which is why we have bigger pieces left over and more damage to the second watermelon, which is kind of what I thought would happen, but not much of a difference. All right, guys, that's all I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed our video on the 545 by 39, seven and six poison bullet. Like I said, this is a test that I've wanted to do for a very long time and I'm pumped that we finally got it done. Kind of surprised that we were actually able to capture that bullet in ballistic gel on only the second attempt. I definitely didn't expect that, but like I said, there's a lot of luck involved in that. So I guess we got lucky. Either way, hope you all enjoyed the video. If you did, please let me know down in the comments below. As always, hit that like button for me, guys. I'd really appreciate it. Thank you all for watching and I'll see you next time.